My motivation for writing a book on Stata programming, Stata I should explain, is one of the widely used software packages, statistical packages um, that are out there these days. And the motivation was really driven by the notion that there really wasn't a clear treatment of the subject out there as a standalone book. Uh, there is a manual, one of the state of manuals, called the Programming Manual. Uh, some people have it, many people don't have it. It's sold sort of a la carte. Uh, but the manual, of course, is not something from which you learn programming. The manual is a reference work. Uh, and the whole motivation of this book is to encourage people to learn how to actually use the tools that are out there within this package uh, effectively. And that's a, that's a very different thing than merely telling them how those tools are described, what their syntax might be, what options you have in using them. Uh, that doesn't teach people how to use them. It merely explains the details rather than the actual mechanism they need uh, to learn how to use these things effectively. An interesting thing about this book, as opposed to the book that I published in 2006, which is really oriented toward econometrics and economists and people in other social sciences, uh, the current book on state of programming really should appeal to people in all disciplines. In fact, the largest single user group within state, the state of community are health science researchers. And when we have user meetings, it's an interesting combination of people who are in cancer research and people who are doing economic analysis and people who are doing sociology or psychology, things like that. Uh, all of those people can benefit from using state of programming effectively. So there are examples in the book that are drawn from the health sciences, from the other social sciences, as well as from my own discipline of economics in this case. The sort of unique feature of this book, as compared with the dozen or so other books that State of Press has published, is that it is in the format of the book is, uh, is different. It's not by any means an original idea. It is, uh, it is certainly borrowed uh, from that of many of the O'Reilly books. Um, O'Reilly publishes a set of very, very good computer books, a number of which I have on my shelf, which are called cookbooks and they contain recipes. They contain short uh, descriptions of a problem and the solution using a particular computing language to solve the problem. And I decided in looking at the notion, how do you teach people programming, that that would be a very effective way to teach them state of programming. So the odd numbered chapters in the book are in, indicate what it is you need to learn about a certain set of commands, a certain technique, a certain set of tools, the even-numbered chapters that follow them are filled with recipes from six to eight per chapter, a total of about 40 in the book. And each of those recipes is a short problem statement, a couple of sentences, followed by two or three pages, in some cases more, uh, of a solution to the problem with code, with explanation of the code, with illustration of how that can be used. And the notion is that of a cookbook. You don't want to cook exactly this recipe. You don't have those ingredients in your kitchen. But you want to make something like that tonight for dinner. And that's the notion here. If you give someone a clear example of something that might be useful to them, they can adapt it to their own needs. And they can make that recipe into something that is indeed helpful for them. The format of this uh, interspersed recipes among the text is really motivated by the notion that it's hard to teach people how to do something like program in any language when you come down to it. It's hard until they need a particular technique, until they need to solve a particular problem. It's hard for people to understand what a particular programming construct is good for. And if they don't understand what it's good for, then you know, they don't pay much attention to it. If you can, you can describe it and you say, you might want to use this function. You might want to use this loop construct. Well, until they actually need it, until it can be illustrated to them, this is how you solve this problem. That loop construct is what you haul out when you have this issue. You need to solve it. How do you do it? You do it like this. And so the recipes in the book are illustrative of how to solve real-world problems in a particular discipline. And the hope is that people will learn a lot more about becoming a programmer from those 
illustrations than they would by merely a description of, well, here are the various constructs in the language that you can use to write a program. Um, I've learned myself many programming languages over the years, and I've always found that the best way to learn it is to learn, learn it by solving problems, by adapting someone else's program, by taking something that does work and modifying it uh, to serve your needs. And that's really the spirit in which uh, this book was, uh, was written. The importance of being able to program a statistical package is something I think that is uh, widely underestimated in importance because in many ways uh, there are many packages out there uh, in which you can put in some numbers, hit a few buttons, get some answers. But if you're doing research in any discipline, in any field, uh, you have to be able to do something in a reproducible manner. You have to be able to go back and get those results again, modify the model you're using to estimate a particular structure, re-estimate it with these changes, get exactly the same results that you did when you might have done it weeks ago, months ago. Um, if you have people using statistical packages in sort of a point and click manner, then they very often are unable to reproduce their own results. And that's not science, that's a video game. And we have to be aware of the fact that it's very important for a researcher to be able to go back and say, well, uh, here's the computations I did for this paper. I sent it off to a journal. I waited a year. Now I have a report that says, if this is to be published, you've got to make these changes. Well, if I don't have the, the programs available that I use to create the original numbers, I'm in very serious trouble. Um, and whether I'm a professor writing a, rewriting a paper or a graduate student writing a dissertation or a graduate student working as a research assistant or in a research institute, reproducibility is at the heart of what is really science um, and not, not merely fooling around with the data. Um, so the importance of learning how to program is in the one hand just a matter of doing uh, legitimate science in whatever it is you're doing and analyzing some data. On the other hand, it also is very much motivated by the notion of labor saving. It's very, very often much quicker to write a short program to do a very repetitive task. Computers are very good at repetitive tasks. They're not very good at originality, but they are very good at doing something exactly as you tell them to. Um, you can avoid learning how to do that by doing it yourself, click, 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 making the same change in 47 lines. What's the likelihood that you'll do it right 47 times in a row? Practically zero. What's the likelihood that a program, if written properly, will do it right 47 times or 4,700 times? That likelihood is one. So learning how to do programming in a statistical language uh, is a way to save yourself a great deal of time and effort and worry over whether things are being done right. Uh, and it's very good all around in terms of a little bit of investment uh, in these techniques can save you a tremendous amount of time and frustration down the road in being able to use these tools effectively and be assured that you can always get the numbers out that you had before or take those numbers, modify them as needed, and so on. Now, of course, this is not by itself going to be the only resource you're going to want to use to learn how to program in Stata. You really should have access to the manuals, to the hard copy manuals, um, and the uh, programming manual that is part of the Stata documentation is certainly something which you should have, as well as, of course, the online help, which in incorporates a great deal of that. Stata also runs a set of so-called net courses, which are internet-based courses uh, for, for those who want to learn about uh, both beginning and advanced programming techniques. I haven't taken those courses, but I know a lot of individuals who have, and many of them have said they're very valuable techniques. Um, they're, they're very valuable uh, in terms of learning how to use these tools. Um, but there's also uh, again, the notion of learning by doing. Many people learn how to program by participating, for instance, in the listserv, 
posing a question to the list server, to the state of list list server, uh, getting responses back saying, you know, if you use this technique, you could do that much more easily, or you could get the answer to come out right if you if you use this technique, use this function, whatever. So, in many ways, I think uh, programming is to some degree an art. Uh, and you have to practice to become good at any art. And this is, this is a case where uh, looking at a lot of examples of code that does work uh, is a technique that's very useful. And one of the aspects of Stata that's very unusual is that about 80% of the commands in the program, and there are hundreds of separate commands, are written in a language which you can read, which you have access to in your copy of Stata. So you can look at their code, and their code has been professionally written and debugged and checked and verified. Uh, using that as a base for developing something of your own is a very good idea because you know they did it right. They did it in a very professional manner. So that's another way in which many of us suggest if you want to see how to program something like that, go look at the code that's already there. And given status open nature in this respect, that code is available for the vast majority of things you might want to do. The book uh, contains many examples of code. It contains uh, both uh, listings of code that's used to solve these problems in the recipe sections, as well as the output that comes when you run those examples in Stata. All of those examples are available, are freely downloadable, uh, in a single zip file from the Stata Press website. So in this case, even if you don't own a copy of the book, you're free to download those, uh, those examples which come with the data sets used in their analysis. And so in this respect, uh, you, you don't have to type in what's in the book in order to try out something like this. You can merely download these data sets and so-called ADU files, program files, uh, and do files, and, uh, and merely start modifying them, play around with them. And that is, after all, the best way to learn to experiment. Take one of these things um, which doesn't do exactly what you need, uh, fool around with it, um, and if you don't break it, uh, then you can get it to do something else. And if you do break it, you can figure out why it broke, and how to fix it, and how to get it to do what you need. So these things, I think, uh, again, uh, it is, after all, a book about computing. To have all of this material available in electronic form is a very key part of the package. Uh, and it is a part that is available separate from the book itself. I think it was a very challenging experience to try to confront the notion of how do you teach people about programming. Um, I think what I learned in the process of trying to develop that kind of, uh, that kind of a book was how hard it is really um, to do this. I'm, I'm glad I don't teach computer science. I think it would be much harder than teaching economics in a way because I think in, in many ways teaching people to program is something that is a very challenging task. And I hope that people who have, uh, have the book, who have read the book, are finding that, uh, that it has been successful in that respect. But I think it is, it is difficult um, to convince people to absorb the details of something like a language uh, until they have a need for those details. You could draw the analogy to a foreign language. You can study a foreign language for years, but until you go and try to use it uh, in the country where they speak it, uh, you don't really understand what you do and do not know how to do with that language. And that's very much the same with a computer language. Looking at it as some sort of abstract thing, oh yes, conceptually, here's how you would do that, cannot be divorced from the notion of having some reason why you might want to do that or need to do that to solve a problem. And that is, I think, why uh, this recipe format interspersed with the chapters describing the details uh, is a way that I think is, is going to be able to help people understand in a more concrete basis why they should bother learning the details of this or that feature of the language because here's an example right here of what you can use it for and that might motivate better learning than merely saying here is the construct, here's its formal syntax, here's how it works without really motivating uh, why would you need that? What's it good for? Well, here's an example of that and 
hopefully that sort of thing will come across well uh, in resonating people's minds when they read it and realize, oh yes, I, I had to do something like that a while ago and it was a, a real pain to try to figure that out, uh, whether in Stata or some other language, well, here's, here's a way in which I could have saved myself a lot of trouble. Um, I gave a lecture a few years ago at one of the London meetings called um, A Little Bit of Stata Programming Goes a Long Way. And that eventually evolved into this book, that if you learned a little bit about how to use these tools effectively, you could save yourself a lot of time and, and become more effective in doing what is your job and letting the computer do the mundane aspects of the task. And I think that should, for many people, have a snowball effect. You learn a little bit and you realize, oh boy, I just saved a huge amount of hassle with this. Maybe I should learn a little more. Maybe I should go buy Baum's book and <laughs> learn even more. Well, some people, I think, will be um, swayed by that argument, and some people will um, be a much more uh, capable researcher and much happier in their daily life because they're not going to be fighting with the computer all day to try to get their research done. And that is, after all, um, one of the major issues in my mind. How do we do our job more effectively, do what requires the human mind, and let the computer take care of the, dog, you know, of the mundane details, which humans are not very good at and computers can do in, in a flash? Uh, that's the real challenge, I think, uh, and convincing more people that if they only learned a little bit, they could offload more of the mundane work on the computer. That's, I think, uh, if people gotten that message out of the book, then it, it has been successful.